Someone's got funny faces. Is it not working? Okay. Can you guys see us? Tell us if you can see us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are. There we are. Oh, we are? Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. I am excited to be back after my two week break. Huh. <laughs> I know you. I know you want a break, right? Mm hmm. I, I would love a vacation. You're going to get one. You're going to get one one day. <laughs> Never will I get a well, vacation. Well, the, the, I really only had five days of vacation. Okay. I don't know. I, I'm not a mathematician by <laughs> any means, but I believe there's seven days in the week, and you just said two weeks. <laughs> well, the other time I was actually not feeling very well. So five days of fun, but then not feeling very well after that. But right. I am back. I am better. The ratio. And Corey will eventually get to go on vacation, except we'll probably have him literally key in live. I won't have a vacation. No, it'll be Friday through Wednesday. So you're here Thursday. How about that? <laughs> Thursday to Thursday. It's fine. There it's you fine. go. There um, you go. So welcome, everybody, here yes. to After Hours at Linda's Electric Quilters. We are super excited that you have joined us tonight. Yes. Um, so what to, I know you have a list of things. She's so happy to be back to have her list. She writes down a lot of lists. I'm just very good with the flow. She has I a lot know. Of lists. I know. Oh, yep, the purple is almost gone, Leanne. I know, it's washed out. Okay, so first thing is first. We Again, we're glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel right down there. Um, and then give us a big thumbs up and let us know. And then share with your friends, right? Yep. Yeah, we want to be able to share with your friends. Um, and, you know, I, me, I always like to ask a kind of a funny question and have a dessert at the same time. So I'm going to ask the question, and then I'm going to talk about this awesome dessert I haven't tried yet, but I know it's going to be good, right? Why are you say asking me right? I don't know. You no. just brought it in the office. I'm just joking. Hey, so seriously, so the question is, is where are you from? Which a lot of you are asking, but I want you to tell me the high temp in your location today because the reason is, is I need to know where I'm going to retire because it is so hot here. The high, you mean this like the temperature right now? Yeah, temperature, yes. Okay, high temp. You would, you said that really fast. Okay, well, that's that what I mean. The high temp, that's what you just said. <laughs> we'll break it down for him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so she's basically looking for another vacation. So we need temperature spots of where you're currently watching from. So we need to plan it out. And by we, I mean I have to plan it out. So <laughs> Anyway, but while you're doing that, I actually, um, so wh why I wasn't feeling good in uh, last week, you know, I really Story feel time. like it might be more than just my seasonal allergies. Possible I'm getting older and getting more food allergies. So I decided I am going to actually start trying to do some gluten-free, you know, just try to cut a few things out. And but first one was gluten. Well, I was on my stop. I was on my community get, page. Get a little older, maybe some food allergies. I know. Okay, well, I'm not I was on my community page, and there was um, this lady had posted some really cool, awesome desserts. But and I looked at them, but and they were all gluten-free, dairy-free, all this stuff. I'm like, how is that possible? But it was like a donut, and I'm like, I want to see what else she has. So I went to her website. Uh -huh. It was super cool. I went to the website and I found these oatmeal cream pies. And I was like, how can you make oatmeal cream pies gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, all that? So I reached out to her. I had her make me some. So we're going to try them on the air. Um, so and when I did go to her website and look, I, see, I saw that she actually had a um, cookbook. So on all healthy desserts. Oh, okay. So all these pictures were amazing. There was all these healthy desserts. See, um, it's really hard for to say healthy dessert, it in is. my opinion, because we've been so like you know like, what's the word, conditioned yeah. to believe that desserts are supposed to be full of sugar and yeah. get you really 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 sugar high and then you just drop. Yeah. So we're gonna give this a shot and try it. And um, so her website is prettypies.com if you want to go get some free recipes on these healthy desserts. Um, and I also did put it in the link description below. You can check it out because um, there was all kinds of desserts on there. And, you know, everybody's trying to eat a little bit healthy. And my favorite thing are desserts. Okay. okay. So, Corey, let's try it out. Prettypies.com. Prettypies.com. Okay. Now, these are gluten-free, dairy-free, and sugar-free. So it's like fun-free to me. So, I'll try it. Give it a shot, though. Let's see. Mmm. Those aren't bad. Those are good. What? Are you keeping them? 
Okay, you got to come back to the show, though. I'm going on vacation. <laughs> Those are good. These are really good, actually. You would not ima think that that mm -hmm. would not have any of the stuff that you're used to. No. Oh, my goodness. Those are I so mean, good. You hear oatmeal pie, so you're biting into it thinking something completely different. Yeah. Your, your taste buds are like, mm, you thought. But it's still, I like it. It's very I good. I think it's really good. Well, and the filling is so light. Mm-hmm. Light and I fluffy. Just, I just feel like I've eaten healthy. Which I am, because I looked at all the ingredients. I feel like I've eaten healthy. I looked at all the ingredients, and I was like, oh, those are so healthy. This isn't going to taste good. But it tastes yeah. really good. I think it's really good. So shout out. Thank you. Thank you. Prettypies.com. Love it. All right. Cool. Let's get to it. Okay. Mm, I'm going to keep those for later. Close up, please. Oh, she wants a close up. Okay. Yes. Oh, here. You got one in your hand? No. Oh, yeah. I'm just over here. Why not? Summer. There you go. Oh, those are really good. Oh, if I knew where the camera was. There you go. So, those are really good, actually. They are. And it makes you want more, right? Yeah, but we can only have one. I know, we can only have one. <laughs> All right, we got to get started. Okay. All right, super fun. All right, so today, what are we doing, Corey? Um, today, we are going to be looking at the Basic 8 uh, book series. Last week, Summer was here with me. She's behind the camera again. Everyone say hi to Summer. Summer um, she's see hi. She sees the cam uh, all the comments still. Um, but we are going to be doing Basic 8 book 3 and 4. So like we talked about last week, the Basic 8 series has four books, but they have been combined into two. So one and two, and three and four. So we're going to be looking at three and four. Um, and a lot of you threw in the comment section um, below last week that you loved basically the versatility that is available with just the basic eight stencil. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's so much you can do. Yeah. And how you could adapt those stencil designs that are in this book to different quilt blocks that you see that come through your door that you piece together. So we're going to do that same idea today. And I've got four new quilt blocks for you today. All right. Well, I have few quick questions on the dessert pie. You know, this is the big thing. Desserts. I, I did put the link in there. If you go to prettypies.com, you can actually look at all the recipes. And if you just put in the oatmeal pie, you can actually see everything that's in the filling. There's uh, almond milk. I mean, there's just really good, healthy stuff in there. Anyway, all righty. Let's go over there. So what are we doing first? Um, so let me run over. We'll start. I'll show a few things. Um, then we'll get the drawing station prepped. And you are up first, I think, today. Okay, I'll do it. Yeah. So, um, we're going to walk over here to our machine, and I've got a couple of different blocks stitched out for us today. Um, we've got an Ohio Star, a Lone Star, a Pineapple Block, a Hunter Star, and then just a regular square block. Um, this is what that book is going to look like. I know a few of you have already dropped in the comments below um, that you've gotten your book and you're excited to start learning. Um, so, this is the one we're going to be working with. Plethora of designs in this book, let me tell you. I think last week it was, what was it, summer 66, 63? And this week uh, we're at 70 um, pages in this book. So a nice thick book, plenty of uh, really cool designs to work with. So I'm excited to play with those So Corey, tonight. is it page 43 that's first? Uh, I don't know, you're I know, first, not me. I there and I didn't put them on order over here. Oh, uh, page 43, yeah. Perfect, all right. All right, so I'm going to attempt to do a little bit harder this week. Okay, party. Br branch outside the box a little bit. All right. Um, so mine's on page 43, and I'm going to do this on the first block, and we'll show you when we get over there. And I like, again, how it gives you the arrows and the directions. So I'm going to quickly draw it out for you. And while she is doing that, we had a few uh, comments pop up. Where can you get the book? The books are available on our website www.longarmsupplies.net. All right, Corey, I always need your coaching. You're like the best little coach. Oh, okay. So just to go up here, right? So I'm going to mm -hmm. the same way you are. Mm -hmm. Down. Uh-huh. 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 Yep. No, you're on the right track. There you go. There you go. And repeat the process. Just like that. It's weird when you go backwards, though. It's, it's a little different. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. There you go. Oh, okay, well, you're moving too fast now. I know, a little fasty. Point, point. Yeah, you're doing your points. Well, that's why it's a dry erase. <laughs> there we go. 
And then, let's see, I'm going to answer a few other questions while you're working on that. Yeah, go for it. Um, what was last week's book? Last, week book, uh, last week's book was the Basic 8, book 1 and 2. We're doing book 3 and 4 this week. But book 1 and 2 was last week. Eh, they're kind of looking like a little ghost. We're going to call this, we're going to give it another name. It's a design choice. So you can go out a lot further with those points if you would like. These right here, you could take those a lot further out if you'd like to. Which points? That looks great. I know. I, I'm <laughs> my four little ghosts. Those yeah, your are four my little friends. ghosts. You could have. You can also take this up a little higher. So. Oh yeah, show us me, real quick. Let me come over here to do one. Okay. Flip it right here. So coming in from this point here, we're gonna come out with that nice arc point. Come down to here, point. Then I want to come up, still following that same arc. So come up to right about here, point, return back to here, point, 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 there, there, and down. I feel like maybe I Over. paid for art classes for you and I don't realize I did, because you do such a good job. Uh, you know, <laughs> at least, I mean, I did art appreciation in college. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take it over here. We'll figure this out. All righty. All right, Corey's going to coach me through it over here. Okay. So over at the machine, um, Diana has got her quilt block already quilted out. So if you already had your block down or if you wanted to quilt one out to practice, you have that ability. We're going to take our basic eight stencil. Now these blocks are over nine inches. They're larger than nine inches. So we are going to be working with the 14 inch line stencil. And the code on that one will be on the sticker on the other side. Um, 1887. 1887. So this is the 14-inch one that also comes in a 9-inch um, option as well. So I found my center, and then I'm just lightly, I'm holding this stencil down, lightly going to kind of put those lines on there for that guidance. And for those of us that are new viewers, uh, you're going to have that label side down when you're using this with your pounce powder. Um, it allows it to kind of pull that chalk out of the uh, pounce uh, mechanism a little easier. Yeah, so I don't think I had enough pounce there, but it gives me, I can see good enough. Yeah, the idea of it, you don't want anything super harsh, harshly chalked All on right, there. All right, so I'm going to take my pencil. Okay. Oh, she's going for the light gray one, cousin. I'm trying it. She's going for the light gray. Just to kind of give me a little bit, of, so patient, just be patient with me real quick. I'm going to draw my first one out and then go up, down back up like he said following that curve down and I'm going to put my little loop little teardrop type of thing right in there come back up here and then down and then repeat the process I almost feel like Corey like I probably want to draw the whole thing out sure I know that might take a long time, but let me try the white too on it. Okay. There you go. So here, coach me through, make sure I'm doing this in the right way. I, you said to go, I got it back up here. Yeah. It's different when you're on this angle. Down so you can here. go in that way. Oh. You, you can use this point right here. This will help you find something that'll be your kind of your center to go to. Use that as your point. There you go. That's kind of what I was doing over there. And then. Down there, there you go. Yep. I got the little teardrop down. All right, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> we don't want to bore them with my lack of artistic skills over here. No, they say you're doing a great job. So, okay. So here we go. I'm going to start down here at the center here. And that's kind of where it says on the... um book so I'm going to follow the directions of the book and we'll see I lost my little commentary over here you what oh sorry I'm over here checking questions on the feed <laughs> and everything all right here we go I'm gonna go up here to the corner then down a little teardrop ish I'm in stitch regulator mode. Okay, I'm going to go back up and then back.
back down. Look up here to the corner. Back down to the center. Trying to stay within those lines of the basic eight. Nope, oh, kind of messed up on that one. So we have a little, we got the baby ghost going on. <laughs> Oh, it looks good. Yeah. There you go. myself having to like concentrate a little bit <laughs> so sorry I'm not commentating a lot Ooh, this one's gonna have a head <laughs> okay and I'm gonna give a little circle to kind of hide all that there we go all right party I like it all right so I'm gonna get the scissors and then I'll clean this up and I'll let you jump up and do what you're doing all right I think looking at this though you the reason you kind of kind of went with this same design per se for this section is the way some of these pieces hit this piecing it looks like it was made to fall directly in that part of the block you see that mm -hmm. so okay. I think that's really really cool how it kind of falls in and just hits all those individual pieces absolutely perfect perfect okay yeah all right all righty well I I'm going to come up and I'm going to draw and I'm going to be working um, on a Lone Star block for my first one. So I've got my basic eight uh, copied out, put it in a sheet protector right here. And I am going to be working on page 19. And this is the block that um, I'm going to be stitching out or the design that I'm going to be stitching out. And I've got my start and stop points right over here on the left hand side. And so I'll come here, and I'm going to say I want to start right about there, so I'll do an S for start. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to come down with a little bit of an arc and get to my center point. So I'll come down with my arc to that center point, just like so. And then I'm going to head up my 45 degree angle a little bit, so follow that up just a little bit. And I'm going to make kind of like a wavy diamond, not, you know, I'm just going to kind of make a little bit of more of a curvy diamond, excuse me, not a wavy diamond. So arc out, up, down, and back down again. Okay, so from that point, I want to arc over to my spot right here. So I'll arc right to there. I'm going to come up with a little bit of a wavy diamond as well. You can go the opposite way, so it has a little bit more flow to it. So there, point all the way up, arc and down. Make my arcing point down to here, and then we're gonna do that all the way around now. So we're gonna here, 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 up to there. Continue going that same direction just so it's an easier flow for you and the machine down. Now we're going to start going backwards at this point where this is where it starts to get a little bit fun. So I could take that up a little high there. Bring that here. There, 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 and there. Bring that down. Same thing here. Staying with that same flow. Just like so. Up. And from this point on, we can come down and arc over here. Still continuing on with that piece of my diamond here. So I'm gonna come in and that's where I've got it to stop now. I've done the inner part. Now I can come out and fill in these outer big curves that go right through all of the center of these points. So I'm gonna come still at that point, come out to here Go through this one and over to there, through that one and over to there, through this one and over That's there. That's so pretty. It looks like a snowflake. And then the end. And then end. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then end back at point A. All right, let's go check it out. Okay. Let's 
So over here at the machine. Now I said I'm doing this in a Lone Star. So I kind of took the idea of the piecing of the Lone Star and kind of wanted to adapt this to it to see if I can get things to fit in those sections. So I'm going to take my chalk pencil so I can kind of see where I need to be. And I can go ahead and take my basic eight stencil and chalk it down if I would like to. But as you can see, the way this Lone Star is, it's, it's already a basic eight. If we look at how these lines intersect, if I took, I'll just take the nine inch one for now and laid that right on there. All it would do is extend those lines a little bit longer for me, which would be nice. So let me go ahead and do that. So I have that look. So I've got my nine inch stencil now, label side down. Just chalk this ever so slightly. Just give myself a little bit of an extension on those lines. So you can see it traveled with that piecing already. So this is just gonna extend out to here. So I can draw it out if I would like to, to there. That one's gonna go to there and all the way around. Just so I have that. All the tools that make it so much easier. And then I'm gonna be using the piecing of this Lone Star block to be my points that I need to find. So starting here, this is my starting point, so I'll put an S for start. I'm gonna come in with an arc to this point here. So arc it down. Just kind of like doing a continuous curve, for instance, on this. So arc it down, come up a little bit, and we're gonna do our diamond. And then the point's gonna stop there for the top of it. So we'll arc over, point and stop here, over, down. We're gonna arc all the way up to this piece here. That next diamond's gonna go outside here in this, this space that we've got. So continuing this way, following that chalk line so I know where my points need to be, come down and all the way around just to kind of follow that same flow as I need to all the way around this piece. Let's see how it looks. I'm excited to actually do this one. So I'll put my machine here and start my tie off. Move my book out of the way and let's get going. We'll start it up. So coming down with that arc up to the point of the piecing, over, down, up with an arc to the point of the piecing, do the top of our diamond, down, down here, and repeat the process. Really good. Okay. And you're making it fitting perfect with that Lone Star the way that you've designed it in there. Right, some you need to extend a little. Oh, oh. I see this, so I can't be talking and doing this at the same time. <laughs> um, you can extend a little bit of it you know, out to fit the pieces that you need to. Um, but it's really cool to, you know, kind of thinking a little bit outside the box and making those adapt for you. Yeah, that's really cool. Here, so that one, that one, that one in there. Now from here, that's kind of the inner part of our block. And then we need to make sure that we do these outer pieces here. So we're gonna start from here and make our way up and cut through the top pieces of those. And anytime you can have a pattern that's continuous like that, it makes it a lot easier to. Oh, you're for sure. Pulling up and stopping and all that. Yeah. Like that. And ending back there. Look at that. So I can tie off. And besides my little talking fiasco there. Yeah, that turned out Other good. than that, you can see that it's okay to cross over those piecing lines and they just kind of fall in and just, it looks absolutely stunning. Yeah. That's so. really cool. Just gives another dimension to that Lone Star. For sure. All right. Actually, actually the next one is yours too. This oh, is the next one's be, I think, mine my too. favorite one. What Rich is the next one? Let's take a look. So come back over here to the drawing board. 
And my next one is going to be on page 66. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, here we Isn't go. Isn't this cute? You are requir required reading for his learning curve. She just started him on the new vision. And oh. Like, that's so cute. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So um, I'm going to be working on page 66, and this is a, a Diana's choice. Sometimes we have choice ones that we choose when we're picking these out for you all. This is going to be a, a, her choice for sure. <laughs> um, this is a butterfly. I like how you say that, for sure. For sure. <laughs> um, and on this one, um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to put this on a pineapple block because I really wanted to soften the harsh piecing lines that a pineapple block offers. So these nice curves and flow um, will really kind of just soften that block and kind of you know, separate it a little bit, um, but you know, not really take away but just kind of just wanted to give it a little bit of, you know, extra something. So move my paper out of the way. And still starting here with our basic eight. And I'll zoom in a little bit for you. So we have this. So we've got center point, and that's where we're starting. So I will take this, put a dot there, S for start. And I'm going to come through, and I'm going to do my outer part, so basically the wings of the uh, butterfly first. I can do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that one first. Just keep the flow steady. So first thing I'm going to do is come all the way out with a nice continuous curve, nice arc all the way out to this point. So to here. And now I've got three little curly cues on the way down. So I'll come down and do one, two, still going at that same angle, three. I'm going to come in and do a little bit of a teardrop here. So teardrop just to give a little bit of dimension to that wing. And then on the way out, I'm going to do the curly cues first because they are on the outside of the wing. So coming out, one, two, three, to the point. Come back in with one arc, teardrop. And then this one on the way out here will be a arc on its own. So arc it out to here. Come through, one, two, three to here, got a teardrop, and then out here, one, two, three, arc, and teardrop. So and now with my arcs here, I brought these a little closer to that center point. So when we're actually quilting this out, we can fix that. I'm going to come down and do the body. So come down here. And then on the way up, I've got the head of the butterfly. And I've got the antennas. Oh, who doesn't like a little cute butterfly? Just like that. So we had a question: If you're do, if I was doing this on my Statler, um, I could record sew it mm -hmm. and then use it and just copy and paste along the way in different blocks, right? For sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Alrighty, let's go check out the butterfly. Oh goodness, I got to do a butterfly justice though. <laughs> oh goodness, now I got to quilt it. Oh. All right. So first thing I need is my pounce powder. I need to pounce out the design that I'm working on. So I will take my basic eight stencil and I'm going to take it label side down and find the center of my block. And I'm just matching the four outer corners with these lines. Find the center as best as I can. Take my pounce powder, give it a nice little hit. I'm going to hold this nice and steady and just brush over. So this fabric we have on here, this is, isn't this dry brush? This is dry brush, yeah. Yeah, so we do carry dry brush online. I had a question about the fabric. And then also the books are online too at longarmsupplies.net. Okay, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. You're fine. Just trying to answer the questions in between. You're good. Um, I have a little bit of excess chalk here, so I'm just going to brush this off with my hand just so I don't have so much on there when I'm working with it. So you can see how easy that just brushes right off. And you can grab your chalk pencil if you would like just to give yourself an idea of starting point. Just right about here. I have my idea of my starting point there. And I can go ahead and chalk this out. Now I want to fill up this block as much as I can. So when we were drawing on our picture, it was a little smaller. But for these wings, I really want to fill up this block. So. My first arc here, I'm going to take it a little closer to my chalk line, just like that, so I have plenty of room for the head and the antennas. But on the way down, I want to give this a big fullness, so I'm going to make a little bit more of a wider arc with my curly cue. So one, two, three, and kind of follow this in on this chalk line. 
and then come up with that teardrop right there. So let's see how this one looks. I love watching them engage on there and answering each other's questions and helping each other out. It's just an awesome community. I just love it. Okay. In between, you know, in between. Commentary. Oh, I can't talk now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not with the butterfly. I can't talk. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be quiet. No, 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 no. You need to commentary because otherwise <laughs> I'm going to try and talk and we're going to get those Christmas trees from Nightmare Before Christmas again. <laughs> All right. So let's start it up and let's go. Getting his loopy doos in there. Got that beautiful wing. There we go. Well, the way I think of it is every butterfly has its own character. So whatever wing you give it, whatever, it's its own character. It's like its own DNA. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Ooh, what'd I do? I was talking in there. <laughs> you threw me off. I was talking. We, we were giving in its own DNA. You know what? I'll just make two of them there. There you go. Just got to remember to do that again. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, I'll uh, be quiet. Mm -hmm. Filling up my block. I'll do those like that again. And here. So since I'm headed this same, going to stop now. Since I'm <laughs> headed this same direction, I am going to go ahead and do the bottom part of the butterfly at this point, just to keep good flow of the machine, to keep it from jerking. So point, point. Still headed that same direction. I'm going to head upwards. Do the first top half of the butterfly's head. Come and do its antennas. Other part of its antennas. And then finish off. Just like so. I think you might have missed one little spot. <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> I sure did. I was so busy, excited. I was so happy. Look at that. I know. It looks great. I it might so want happy. that other little part, though. Well, goodness gracious. <laughs> no, this can't make you happy today. There you go. I liked it without it. It was a unique <laughs> butterfly. Okay. Oh, it's still unique. Yeah, it's still unique. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I love a butterfly. So that's super cool. That? So something to throw over that pineapple block. Really nice just to kind of well, ease you it. And how simple it was really to put a butterfly to add a little character to a quilt. So yeah. maybe you just want to put those little characters everywhere in your quilt, different places, just to add that little spark. Yeah, for sure. Well, I hate to put you on the spot again, but you get the next one too. Mine is the last square. Oh, so. gosh. And this okay. one's even, I love this one too. We picked, This book has some really cool ideas. Okay, what page am I on next? 31? 31. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, hopefully I don't miss I anything. I picked out some challenging ones for you this you week. You did pick out some challenging ones, but that's fun. I like challenging ones. I like a good challenge. Okay, so I'm on page 31 for this one, and I will be working on uh, this block right here. So this one can just kind of get thrown in any you know, open space if you got a block. If you have a nice four patch, um, this would be a nice one because it kind of fills in all four of those corners. Um, this one you can I use. You can use it for cornerstones, um, your parts of your corners and your borders, uh, all sorts of different ideas. But you're going to be using, as always, that good old basic eight. That good old basic eight. So, <laughs> let's see. You all got right. this. I have faith. Okay. I could be your cheer squad. I'm glad you got faith. But then you wouldn't be able to like talk. No, I'm good. All let's right, go so Corey, start. Let's go. Okay, that was good. Okay, Thanks. good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to start off with um, the first part of my little curly cue that I have. And the way that I want to do this, because I'm going to come and finish it out, would be to come up to here and stop just like that instead of coming through. Or, no, actually, yeah, no, I would do that. So I'm going to come and stop just like that. And when we come up to finish this, that's when we'll close that off. So then I'm going to come up with half of my heart for this one. So half of the heart, just like that. And then I will travel out over to about right here with a nice arc. So I'll arc over, nice big wide arc, just like that. And I'm actually going to give it a little bit more shape 
but then that I want to take a little bit more space. So way, big arc, just like that, fill in that section. And I want to come in and do a little circle, a little baby circle, just like that, and come over and do some petals for my flower. Just like that. And then arc it back to that same point, but give it a stem. So you don't want to, you can go back on the same line if you want, or you can give it a stem um, and give it a little bit of spacing. This one, I'm going to head up my 45 degree angle. Little bit of an arc, not a huge one. You want to stay pretty close to this line. Once you get to about midway on this section, you're going to give yourself a nice circle. So I'll circle like that. And then I will give myself little petals. So a little just more of a wavy heart um, action. Wow. Oh, this is cute. Wow. <laughs> That's cute. Traveling up that space just like that. And then coming through, coming down into that point. I'm going to head over here, big wide arc uh, again to come in with our point over here so big nice arc fill up the space little baby circle give yourself three petals to work from here oh that's going to be more of a tulip one head over there and then arc it back and then you're going to give yourself your other half of your heart right here and then we'll finish off and close that off just like that it's something she's fancy that's super cute I like how it's on the angle, so it shows if you want to put that in a corner, um, anywhere. It's that's super cute. I can't wait yeah, to see it. Yeah, for sure. You could do it on a corner if you want to do a block on point. Yeah. Um, you can do it as well and kind of stick it straight up. So I've got open space here. I'm going to grab my basic eight. Move my machine out of the way. Do this label side down. Try to match up my four corners a little bit better on this one. So I can get that there and there, there and there. Okay, looks good to me. I will grab my pounce powder, nice little hit. Hold that stencil steady and you just have to lightly brush this. You don't have to push it down hard, it's gonna fall right out of the stencil, trust me. Just like that. That'll lay there, move all my tools out of the way. I like to brush this off a little bit just to have excess chalk off and I don't need anything super heavy on it. And I am going to try and do this without using my chalk pencil. This is going to be fun. Summer's over there laughing. So I'll pull up my bobbin thread, tie that off. Okay. And first thing I'm starting off with is my half a heart, my small half a heart, and I'm going to my big one. So small one, and then going up with my big one, just like that. And then I will head over with an arc to this point here, give myself a little circle to work from. And then I will give myself my wavy petals. Give myself a little bit of a stem for that. I'm gonna head up this direction slightly, just staying a little bit away from that chalk line, giving myself a nice big circle here to follow, and then I'll do some wavy petals again. Well, this shows how you can fill up a nice size block, and you don't have to have tight stitching, and you can still get a beautiful design. Yeah, for sure. Coming through there and back down again. We're gonna head over. That was a big, that was, I gave myself a really big arc there. Little pebble. Oh, it's gonna be a, this is a funky one. Okay. Come back. Just like that. And then my. Half of my heart, and then my half of my heart. That's perfect. I love that. That looks awesome. Just like that. Not too bad. Not that too shabby. That's super cute. Okay. 
So easily filling up that empty space or those corners or blocks on point with just a little simple design just like that. All right, it's my turn, you guys. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to actually work on page 24. So I'm going to bring you 24. Let you see it. So this is going to be mine. And can you see it yet? Okay, and I'm going to try to draw it out for you. Okay. So let's go back. Get my little feathers in there. Actually, I want to restart that one. I love this dry erase stuff, how it can just come off. Okay. So I'm going to go. There we go. I got my little arch that I wanted. And I was uh -huh. going to adapt it just a uh -huh. little bit with my own likeness. Uh huh. Oh, she's adapting. I love it. That's what you have to do. Let's put some feathers in there, and you can make them whatever size you want. And the idea is I'm trying to stay in between the different lines on the basic eight, so that's where the stencil really does help. Voila! There we go. Okay. We're going to go do this one. Alrighty, I'm excited. Let's see. Okay. I was reading some things here. Some uh, Our viewers would like a red snapper demo. Oh, okay. Well, so let's we'll do have this. to add that to our list of things. Yeah. We'll definitely add that to our list of things. Okay. So. Okay. So we've got a hunter star block quilted out. Thank you. I forgot to already. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, so with this block, um, you can see it's kind of designated into a four patch, and you'll see the way that Diana quilts this is it falls in perfectly. <laughs> I'm not sure about perfectly. It's going to fall in perfectly. But I'm it's going to fall in, in perfectly. <laughs> I'm definitely going to need my lines on this one. I know, I'm pouncing a little bit heavy. I would say you are taking well, that stencil for all it's worth. <laughs> I got a good pounce, though. There you go, good pounce, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. So, but it's still the idea is I'm staying within my quadrant. Right? Yeah. Okay. I just want you to laugh at yourself every now and then. Laugh at myself? The hunter star is already a basic eight. Oh. <laughs> well, the hunter star is already a basic eight. But just in case you're like me, But it's you're always so good new. to pounce it just in case. I did that with pounce. the Lone Star, too. Oh, but so you can see I pounced it right online, though. You okay. did right on point. All Look right, at you. There we go. <laughs> so. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to get my, pull my stitch up right here. And then I'm going to come down this way. out, bring it back to my point, and then give myself some little feathers. I'll work better on the other feathers. There you go. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's pretty bad. You didn't know it's not. That's okay. And then we're going to do this again. Big curve like you did. Big there wide we. curve like you did. You'll fill up all that piecing. There you go. There we go. Okay, and then do that again. So coming in with your first small one, a little tighter, like that, and then that big wide to fill up the piece. There you go. You want to fill up that piecing. And you can do as big as feathers if you want. So if you want to go larger, so I'm just showing you larger ones up here. So if you, you can definitely go up Look higher. At that. that one's not too, I like that I one. I like that we one. I might cut the rest of them off. I'm just, screaming. And to enter that into the mini quilt auction, that one little section. <laughs> that one little section, there we go. <laughs> Filling that piecing all the way up. And another thing we like to show you here at After Hours, especially when you're quilting, you know, quilting in general, is that it is okay to cross over that piecing line. You're not going to hurt it. You will accentuate it sometimes more than anything, um, just like Diana's doing right now. All righty. So well, the first one I was kind of like, anytime you go backwards, I find, mm -hmm. It's a little hard, yeah. especially for me. I like it. Um, but I, those top two, I'm just saying, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty good. 
Glad, I'm glad you're proud of yourself. You need to be proud well, of yourself. Well, we have to be proud of ourselves, You have to be. Right? You have to be. We don't want to be disappointed in what we're doing. We have nope. to be excited about that, what that, we're you doing. Be, it's more fun when you're excited about it. All right. Let's take it back up. So you can take it back up there real quick. I'm going to um, take the camera off of here, and then we'll do an overview of what we did today. It's a new one for us. So let's do an overview of what we looked at today. All these different design ideas, just from that one stencil. And I want, we want to make sure people remember, we are not pros. No, We're not, not at all. We're not show quilters. <laughs> nope. We're not trying to teach you how to do things perfect. We're trying to teach you how to just have fun and show you that you can make mistakes, but there's tools out there to really help us. Yeah, so many things, you know, to start your learning, especially with freehand uh, quilting, everyone kind of really wants to know, where do I start? Where do I, what do I start playing with? Um, that would definitely be the way to do it, is to start with these books and these stencils. Yeah. All righty. So I think I, that was fun. I had a that good time. That was fun. Yes. That was fun. It's a blast. Ooh. Yeah. I, what, I, what I like about it is that we can just have fun. Yep. We aren't pros. We can make mistakes. But yet, we also can let people know it's okay to make mistakes. Yeah. And you just try and try and try, and then you fall in love like how I did back there, because I was really excited about that. Yeah. As long as I'm excited, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> exactly right. Um, all righty. Well, thank you all so much um, for joining us. Yes. I had a great time. You want to show them what we're doing next week? Yes. Um, so next week, we are going to be focusing on the Paisley book. So the Paisley book and stencil, and there are a ton of designs in this one as well. This one's 33 pages. Yeah. So. And a different way just to do bunch. things. Yeah, a bunch of different designs in here. Um, design ideas, design things. We'll be pulling them all out. Yeah, so if you like this book or any of the books that we have shown over the weeks, yep. um, we do have them on our website. Right down there the below. The description's there. We, all put, we also offer a coupon code just yep. to kind of help you get a few of the books. Um, and I don't think a lot of people know this, but if you spend seventy-five dollars more on this type of product, you can get free shipping. Seventy-five dollars so or more. Or seventy-five dollars. <laughs> seventy-five dollars more. So you buy a book and then spend seventy-five dollars more. We're gonna hook you up. No. <laughs> well, you we could do that. You too. could do that too. No, so it's seventy-five dollars or more. There's actually a coupon code at checkout to give you free shipping. So discounts off the books. Yep. And, and they and shipping. they can be combined together, so you can use both those discount codes at the same time. Yeah. And so yeah, and there we go. I think that's awesome. I had yeah. a great time. I think that was fun. Yes, I, I like it, I like it, I like it. Yes, I did. Um, so we will go back and read through some of those comments. I know a few of you had some suggestions for demos and a few yeah. other things you'd like to see in the future. We will get to those. Yes, Trust we me, will. we will. Um, but I guess for now, thank you so much for joining. Welcome yes. back. Thank you. Obviously. Thank you. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time here at After Hours. Bye. Right, bye.